Hey folks, uh, this lesson is on powers and exponents. So it's our second lesson in our textbook that we're following and uh, let's get started. So this lesson uh, and the rest of your math life, you guys, I know I know some of you guys are, you just don't want to learn the, the multiplication tables, but it'll make your math life so much easier all the way through high school. And so if you were in my class, I'd say you know, spend a day and just remember all the way up to 10 times 10. I'm, I'm telling you, it'll, it'll make your math life so much easier if you just know these multiplication tables. And, and start small. Start with all the way up to 3 times 3, like 3 times 3. If you go over and go down, 3 times 3 is 9. Here's 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, if I went down to 7 times 7 is 49, okay? Or 7 times 6 is 42. Here's, here's 6 times 7 is 42. That's the same as 7 times 6 is 42. If you can just, you know, get this, memorize this here. It has a main priority right here all the way up to 10 times 10, all these numbers. Here's 9 times 8. 9 times 8 is 72. Um, a lot of you guys already know this, and, and math is so much easier because of it. You, the rest of your math will be so much easier if you can just, you know, nail this. I'm telling you, you guys, uh, whoops, I spelled multiplication wrong. I put an extra zero in there, I-O-N, up extra I in there, not zero. So multiplication table. Okay, anyways, we'll come back to that. It'll be misspelled as we do this. Sorry, spelling is one of the, the lesser subjects I always say. So... <laughs> Anyway, so here's a power, you guys. A power is the product of repeating factors. So here's a, a three to the fourth power right there. So so here three is being used as a factor four times. So three times three times three times three is the same as three to the fourth right there, okay? So this is called the base. The base of the power is the repeated factor, and this is called the exponent, okay? So the exponent uh, indicates the number of times that the base is used as a factor right there, okay? All right, so here, 3 to the second power. Uh, in words, we can say 3 squared or 3 to the second power. This would be 3 to the third power, or um, you can say 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 3 to the third power. Okay, this is just 3 to the 4th. There is no gimmick for that. So 3 to the 4th would be that. So it would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times. So here we go. This says write each product as a power. Okay, so the base is 4 and it's being multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So um, uh, 4 is used as a factor 5 times. So the exponent is 5. That becomes 4 to the 5th, okay? And remember, multiplication can be represented with a dot in between numbers right here, or they put an X in between numbers, or the X symbol, or this just means a cross like this is multiply. So here, the base 12 is being used as a factor 3 times, so, so that would be 12 to the 3rd power right there, okay? Okay, so let's do that with these ones here. So here we have uh, 5 being a factor, looks like 6 times. So this would be 5 to the 6th right there. And this is 16 being a factor 4 times. So that would be 16 to the 4th. That's a big number, by the way, you guys. So 5 to the 6th is also a big number. All right, so let's find the values of these guys, okay? So when it says find the values, then we actually multiply these out, okay? So let's let's go ahead and uh, write them as repeated multiplication. So this is 7 times 7, 2 times. This is 5 times 5 times 5, and multiply 5 3 times, okay? 7 times 7, you guys, that was on that chart right there. So 7 times 7, here's 7 times 7 right there. 7 times 7 is 49. We'll talk about 7 times 7. We'll talk about this number 49 being a, a perfect square in just a little bit. So there's this one, um, uh, the value of 7 squared. Okay, very common. Students want to call this 14 because 7 times 2 is 14. But that little 2 means how many times you multiply 7. So 7 times 7, 2 times. Okay, all right, let's do these guys. So 5 times 5, 5 times 5 is another perfect square. 5 times 5, most of you guys know this already. If you don't, I'm telling you, just spend some time and memorize this. If you can do that, 
uh, in a day. That'll make the rest of your math life all the way through high school so much easier. Everything comes back to the basic foundations of the multiplication table that I spelled wrong. Sorry about that. Anyways, 5 times 5 is, is 25. So this is going to be 25 right here. So if we put 25 in there, 25 times, think of 25 as a 25 cents, a quarter. If we have five quarters, that's what would be uh, five times five times five. So five times five is 25, and then 25 times five is five quarters, and five quarters is a dollar 25. Four quarters is a dollar. So five quarters is a dollar 25. So a dollar 25 would be 125, 125 right there. Okay, 125 cents. Anyways, just some little gimmick. So the square of a whole number is a perfect square. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about um, the square like 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 squared is 4. 3 times 3 is um, is 9. So 3 squared is 9. So this is called a, a perfect square. So all of these numbers, look, they go down in the diagonal. These are all the perfect squares. Here's 1 squared. Here's 2 squared. Here's 3 squared. Here's 4 squared. 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, 10 squared. There's lots of gimmicks on this, you guys. Here's one gimmick. I don't know if you guys can see this. Perfect squares run in consecutive odd numbers. All right, what you know, odd numbers like one, three, five, seven. Check this out. Here's a little gimmick to remember perfect squares. One plus three is four. Four plus five is nine. I'm just adding the next odd number. Nine plus seven is sixteen. The next odd number from seven is is nine. So sixteen plus nine is twenty-five. The next odd number from 9 is 11. 25 plus 11 is 36. Plus 13 is 49. Plus 15 is 64. Plus 17. Finally, plus 19. Get you that right there. So anyways, these are good numbers to know. Along with this whole table, please, I'm, you're going to make your math life so much easier. All right, so the square of a whole number is a perfect square. So are these perfect squares? Is 64 a perfect square? Well, here's that number chart. Here's 64 right here. It is a perfect square because it's 8 times 8. So uh, since 8 is being multiplied 2 times, 8 squared is 64, then 64 is a perfect square. How about 20? Is there a number we can multiply to get 20, a number times itself? Well, here's 20 right here, but that's 4 times 5 or 5 times 4. So, But there's no number that you multiply by itself to get 20, so no whole, whole number. Whoops, I misspelled number here. So no whole number squared equals 20. Let me get rid of that extra I. I uh, seem to be addicted to I's on my letters here. So no whole number square, uh, squared equals 20. So 20 is not considered a perfect square. All right, it's a whole number. It's just not a perfect square. All right, so now let's find the, the values of these powers. Okay, so I'm going to write this as 6 times 6 times 6. Okay, 6 times, and this just start multiplying. 6 times 6 is 36. So if that's equal to 36, then we multiply 36 times as 6. I'll do this up here. Okay, so 36 times 6, I'm just taking this product and multiplying it by the last 6 right here. So 6 times 6 is 36. I'll put a 6 down here and carry the 3 up there. So here's my 36 right there. And then we do 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. So I'll write 21 right there. So 6 to the third is 216. Okay, 9 times 9. That's how we write that one. 9 times 9 is that perfect square. It's equal to 81. 3 to the 4th is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 4 times. Okay, and then I like to do this. 3 times 3 is 9. This 3 times 3 is also 9. So we're left with 9 times 9 because I get 9 with these two 3s, 9 with these two 3s, and 9 times 9 is still 81. So that equals 81. 18 squared is 18 times 18, and I don't know a magic trick on that one except to just do multiplication. Okay, so I'm going to multiply these 8s first. So 8 times 8 is 64. So I'll put the 4 down here and let's carry the 6 up there. Okay, so there's my 64 for multiplying these two guys. Now I'll go 8 times 1. 8 times 1 is 8, and then I add that. 8 plus 6 is 14. 
So that's where I get the 14 right there. Now I'm going to multiply this 1. But remember, when I multiply from this tens digit, i got to put a 0 right here. Okay, or just leave a space right there. So now I'm going to multiply this. Okay, I'm not using that 6 anymore. So I'm going to go 1 times 8. That's what goes right here. So I'm going to get the 8. And then I'm going to do 1 times this 1. That's what goes right there. Okay, and then we're going to add 144 and 180. I know it's a long process, but... Um, if you just know what multiplication table, it just everything, you guys. I've been teaching math all the way through high school, all the way through calculus, and it all comes back to just knowing your basic multiplication table. So your I am one when you get into high school, integrated math one or algebra one, depending on what school you go to. Everything comes back to that foundation of the multiplication table. All right, let's go ahead and add these here. So add that, that's four. Add this, that's 12. So I'll put a two right here carry the 1 for the 12 right there and then I'm going to add 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 so 324 is 18 squared okay almost done you guys hang in there so reminder the area of a of a figure is the amount of surface it covers and I know what you're thinking what what does that mean so just how many squares can you pull out of that so the area is measured always in square units so for example, the area of a square is equal to its side length squared. So here's a 3 by 3 square. So this area is going to be 3 squared. 3 squared is not 6. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 square units. So if this was in inches, it would be 9 square inches. If it was in feet, it would be 9 square feet. If it was in meters, 9 square meters. It's always square units. Don't forget, if you ever have area questions, always finish it with square units. Don't just say it's 9. What does 9 represent? I tell my students, does it represent tires on a car? No. Does it represent how tall you are? No. How about 9 sibling? No. It's 9 square units. So always represent um, uh, in the context of the problem. All right. So here we go. So here's a game board. Looks like a Monopoly board. Uh, is a square with side length of 20 inches. So what's the area? So it's going to be 20 squared. And then, so the area of the game board is just the side of the length squared. So it's 20 squared. Okay, so that's 20 times 20. Multiply 2 times 2 is 4. And then carry the two zeros with the two 20s when you multiply them. So 4 with two zeros gets me 400. So answer the question. So it's 400 square inches is the area of that game board. All right, one more. Okay, so here we go. It says, what's the area of this square traffic sign in square inches and square feet? Well, here it is already in inches. How many feet is 24 inches? Well, since 12 inches equals 1 foot, then 24 inches equals 2 foot. So here it is, the same figure in inches, and here it is in feet. So what's the area? I'm going to square 24, and it'll be 24 squared and in square inches, and this will be 2 squared and square feet. Okay, so 12 squared. Did I say 12 squared? It's not 12 squared. Ooh, I made a mistake again. Almost done. This is going to be 24 squared. So 24 squared is going to be 576. So let's see, I'm making a mistake right here. So 576, it should be 24. I don't know where I was getting 12 from. I happen to know that 24 times 24 is 576. Because I teach math that way. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so... There's that right there. So, um, and then uh, this one's going to be 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. So, 2 times 2 is 4, and this is going to be 4 feet squared on that, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense, and, and take care.